So the main thing is, is that the sleeper is now off. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another video on the Alls Three Garage channel. Today we're we're gonna be taking this sleeper off. So this is kind of a big project. We watched Twin Sticks a little bit on how he did it, and it is the same setup. Being this is a non-unibuilt truck, there's three bolts that mainly hold this thing on, other than all of your little you know lines for the blower motor and all that. Yeah, we right got to take there. off. Yeah, there's one right here on this side. There's another one on that uh, on the other side, and then there's one in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and get those out as well as taking out this inner seal around here. And we figured with this thing off the truck, it'll give us a lot more room. We'll put it on a pallet with some roller wheels, caster wheels. We could roll it around. We could put in our back panel and really do a good job body working this thing. And plus with the color change, it's gonna be a little difficult spraying back in, in the corners. So it's gonna give us more access to this cab to do what we need to do and also this sleeper. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Milwaukee gun as well as a big wrench and see if I can't get under there and get these things pulled off. I'm gonna soak them down first with uh, WD-40, let them sit probably for about 10 minutes, and we might have to get the torch in there too. Who, who knows, this old truck, it's always something. So let me go ahead and start doing this. Finally got the ring off, a bolt, as well as pulling out the brackets. They're big metal pieces that fit along there. Uh, we had to only grind out one, so we did kind of get lucky on the sleeper side. But that's all out there. We got the pieces sitting out there, and then the old seal sitting down here. taking the sleeper off we need something to put it on like we did with the uh, green 48 inch uh, bunk over there so Ron and I built this pallet kind of, yeah I guess they would call it a pallet yeah it's pallet day, so you can get the forks you know underneath it and, and everything from the side and from uh, I guess the back or front of the bunk when we put it on there and then we went to Harbor Freight and just bought these uh, heavy duty casters here and we're just using um, carriage bolts to go into the other side and we have to trim them a little bit but uh put nuts on the back and it, it's working pretty good so far but hopefully hopefully it will work i think it will i think that's a good design construction we did make sure you can get the forks on the side as well as get the forks up top yeah. as well it's pretty sturdy we probably should have got four by fours because this is in a sense it's two two by fours butted together but uh it should work yeah it'll work fine It's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. It rolls pretty good. And actually, surprisingly, I didn't realize how high it would sit off the ground, but that's going to be nice because we will have to do, you know, if it was far closer to the ground, you got to remember, I think it's three or four inches, maybe five inches, that the side of the bunk, you know, from where it's going to be sitting, the side of the bunk's going to be down here. I think like it'll that. give us just enough room to get the huck gun in there to be able to replace some of the panel in the back. Yeah, that, and then also, you know, painting-wise, you know, we don't want to come all the way down to the ground, spray up a bunch of dirt and stuff, so. Yep. So I think this will work pretty good for what we need to. Look at you, expert craftsman and uh, woodworker as well. Yeah, and it would be nice, you know, he could, whenever we uh, take the bunk off, he'll have to take it off the side. Um, then may probably sit it on the ground first 
and then uh, pick it up from the front end. Yeah, pick it up and then pick it up from the front or through the back. Probably be easier because there's that cutout goes like this and comes up. Yep. So we'll do that and then come right here and the forks will easily be able to slide out. And then if we have to pick it up, you know, with the pallet, um, you can slide up or, underneath. Yeah, right underneath or even on the side here. I don't think the bunk weighs that much. No. It's all aluminum, so. Good job, Dave. You knew how to do something. sleeper is now off how we mounted it up in our cart was a little different than what we anticipated but we ended up using the mounts that were there and just put a big two by six down on there on our cart so we can roll this thing around nice and easy it's a little bit bigger than two by six what is that i don't know it's a four by six yeah, four by six go. all right four by six i can't, can't yeah we anymore. originally were trying to take these off um but we couldn't get it to the bolt underneath kind of seized up so we'll get them all heated up and probably just ground them off it'll be a lot easier once it's well, yeah it sits no, up it's higher off. so we can actually undercoat it and everything real nice and we'll be able to get the hot gun up underneath it nice and easy now yeah so we got a uh, lot more clearance room the main this thing is, is we got the world's longest day cab 295 inch day cab so uh at least not day cab for long we'll, we'll finish up the sleeper get it slapped on but a lot more access to, to the lines. We got it like we are. We're painting the whole frame on this truck. So I was just telling Dave and Ian, I said, we're going to have more work painting the frame on this thing than actually painting the body and the cab and the hood. Uh, but you can see, I mean, the frame, this truck came out of ten, or, uh, Kentucky. So the frame is, it's just got a few little spots on it, but nothing major. I mean, it's a pretty clean frame, dirty as can be. Yeah, it's filthy with oil. It had to have a rear main seal leak. At one point, never one big guy's blowing oil all over Covered. the place. But now it's time to clean it up. But we do to pull it outside. We have to put the dash back in it yep. and actually get it running to pull it outside to pressure wash it and everything. So Got a lot of work done to this truck. Just I mean, a shell, not even a shell of a cab, half half a cab left. Yeah, but that's not bad though. <laughs> We're doing all right. I think uh, I think it's looking looking good. A lot of people would probably look at this and be like. What in the heck are you guys doing? But we're doing a full 
rebuild. restoration, rebuild, and custom job. I mean, this unfortunately is what you have to do. You got to be able to get in all the nooks and crannies. Excuse me. You sort of get all the nooks and crannies. You got to pull everything off. And luckily, being an old school truck, you know, there's not that much compared to the newer trucks. So it kind of played to our benefit. But guys, that is going to be a wrap on today's video. I know a lot of it was just taken off the sleeper, but a lot of people said, hey, just shut up and do some work. So you saw us with the Bobcat in here moving stuff around. Thanks, Mike. If you're watching this video, he was the one driving the Bobcat yeah. and doing all the, the tedious work while we just yelled at him and instruct him to lift it up and down and tilt the forks. So if you haven't already, guys, go subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on that bell notification. And I guess we'll catch you in the next one. But remember, keep them wheels rolling.